We thought we knew it all when we started travelling, but turns out we knew nothing. Now, 18 months later, we think we've got the perfect setup to share with you. Not only that, but there are three things we've learned in this last 18 months. First, maximise what you're carrying. Secondly, the more stuff you carry, the more stress you carry. Thirdly, if you're able to make this jigsaw puzzle fit together, it will make the transportation all that bit easier. And I'm first, so let's go. Travelling by air, you can have two items of luggage with you, so a personal carry-on and a cabin bag which goes in the overhead cabinet. This is my personal item and as you can see, it's perfect size to actually fit under the seat in front of you. What I love about this bag, there's all different sections to it. So a front pocket for essential items such as pen and tissues. It's got two side pockets. I use mine for an umbrella and then you can get a small water bottle in the other side. And this particular bag is for a 13 inch laptop. So there's a section at the back there. I use the section when we're on location so I get my laptop in there if we're going out working in a coffee shop or something like that. So the main compartment, what I love is it opens up like this and you can get really easy access to everything and it's really easy to pack. So as you can see it's nowhere near full so it's a great size bag. I've got a hoodie, which I wore obviously in colder climates and I wore that from the UK, took it off on the flight here. And then I've got a pair of sunglasses. I've got a pouch here, which has got all of my items that as soon as I get on the plane, I take it out and I put it in the back of the seat. So that's got my reading glasses, earphones, a fan, tissues. And then I've got my fluids, which go for the security. So that is my personal item. Moving on to my cabin bag. This is actually a new bag that we're traveling with and it's by a company called Crag Hoppers, which is a UK based company. And it's optimal size for going in the overhead cabin. And it's got wheels and a frame. And what we love about it, it's got two easy access pockets at the front. So for going through security, it's absolutely brilliant. So the first pocket, we only actually carry a spare mobile phone, which is our backup. And we also use it as a security camera when we're on location. Then the second pouch, you see how easy it is to undo, it's brilliant. Uh, document folders and I carry my laptop in here and that fits in there absolutely no problem. Again it opens up like that so it's really easy to pack and really easy to open up if you need to get something out. So in here we have packed it with shoes so what we found was the weight of the shoes really was the best thing to carry in here. So mainly you get seven to eight kilos on a, a flight so packing it with all our shoes seemed to be the best option for us. We've also got a couple Coats here, Packer Max, and a spare backpack, foldable backpack, and an emergency first aid kit. Really good inside pocket there. We've got some cards and some ponchos, which you need when you come to Southeast Asia, but we haven't used yet. So that is my cabin bag. So onto my stuff, I'm going to kick off with my personal carry. As Sarah said, when you get onto a flight, there are generally two items of baggage you can take with you, the cabin bag and your personal carry. This is also a new bag from an American company. And in fact, if you look in the description below, we're going to link down there to all of our kit. If any of this is of interest to you, then you, we've got affiliate links, but uh, we're not asking you to do that. So what we've got here is basically what I need when I'm on a flight. And this has got a couple of clever features. Now, the first thing that I need when I'm on a flight are these things, which are power banks. The reason why I need them is many airlines do not want you to put these into the bag that goes in the hold. And often they want to see them as you're going through security, have them local so you can get to it. There's a third one, which I'll come to in a moment. And then on the inside of here, basically, these are a couple of eye masks that we use when we're on a flight so that it blacks out any light when they're, when they're switching the lights on to give food out and all that kind of stuff. So we use these, but also in here, down the bottom, I have probably the most important thing I carry, I think, next to my passport. And that is all three of these are the drives that we use for editing. So this contains all of the footage on them that we use as we travel around the world. If you lose that, 
and we've lost everything. Hours and hours of weeks of work. And this is another battery pack that I take out as we go through security. The reason why this is ingenious is first of all, in the back, it has a couple of separate areas here where you can store things. And we use this to store our passports and boarding passes. We don't tend to use this one, but I've got a pen in here in case we've got some visa details to fill out while we're on the plane. And then I have attached to one side this, which when we sit in the plane, I have that handy in the seat, which is basically earbuds so I can listen to music or podcasts and a charger cable to charge it up on the plane. This is very clever because you can put really secure things in here. As I say, we have passports, but I tend to have money in here and various other things. It has a little pouch on the top here where it stores a lock and that lock has got a hole through here where you can actually secure this bag to a table or a chair or something like that. It's cut proof, slash proof, so it's a really secure place to be. When we're on location, if I just want to have a simple camera with me, this is my day bag, day carry, and there's enough room in there for me to store GoPro and a, a small tripod for a day out. And I would tend to use something like this if we have no plans for video that day, but I just want to have something handy in case I see something impressive that needs to be caught on camera. And it's a nice light carry to do something like that with. Moving on to my cabin bag. Now my cabin bag, I'm not quite as well optimized as Sarah for size. Hers is perfect. And as she said, I did something I'm going to show you at the end of this video at an airport that will help you see whether you are optimized. But this serves a different purpose. This is basically all of our tech. And this is a really clever bag. We actually love this. We tested about three or four bags before we left the UK, before we ended up on this one. And at times we think to ourselves, are we spending too much time looking at bags? We spent, I think, two days talking about configuration of bags. And I think Sarah was starting to think that we're wasting our time. There's other stuff we need to be doing. But actually, bags for us, are similar to when other people buy houses and they're looking at all the things they need in a house because this is everything we're carrying with us. And we looked at another bag which was much bigger than this. It's very, very impressive, made by the same company. It's made by a German company called Tarion. It was just too big, too bulky, too heavy. This is smaller and actually serves a fantastic purpose while traveling and also on location. So let me show you what it's got in here. First of all, a little thing on the side where you could put a water bottle. This is actually a waterproof carrier, so you can put that around there if it starts raining. So we have that. But something else I also keep in here is a combination lock cable. So that I can put around this. Obviously, I wouldn't put it around that, but I can put it around something on here and then strap it to a chair, leg or something like that and lock it in position. You may well be thinking, yeah, but that's not that secure. No, it's not. What it is, is basically a deterrent. If there's something standing in the way of someone just whipping your stuff and taking it away, then I'll go for that. So that's what this cable is. Now, to travel, you'll see this bag has a roll top. So I have this packed pretty full to travel. And in the roll top, I have Drugs, prescription drugs, I'm of a certain age, so I make sure I have a couple of those with me and my glasses and sunglasses. I don't want those going in a suitcase and me not getting access to those when I need them. Also in the top, I have a bag which contains basically everything that I need from an audio perspective. So we have um, lavalier mics, um, another mic system in here, this is another mic system for one of the cameras. So I know yellow means audio. If we continue in the top, when traveling, we have this bag with us, and this is basically a change of clothing for both Sarah and I. Idea being, as we all see these days, airlines are losing bags and it's taking people three or four days to get them. 
Well, we make sure we can change into something when we arrive at our final location, and that goes in the roll top in here. I have my mouse for my laptop, and I have my laptop cable in here also. When we finish traveling and this rolls down, you can see that the roll down is actually a lot tighter to make the bag a smaller bag. Speaking of laptop, to travel on the back, I keep my laptop in here. The good thing again with this is if you're in a location, you want to take your laptop to a coffee shop, but you don't want to take all these other gubbins with it, this unzips either side and that is a laptop pouch instead of a laptop bag. Now it gets exciting and that is what is in here and I'm going to show you that with a different camera. So to kick off this is our new camera the Nikon Z30. Really nice piece of kit we're going to get some good footage on that and just to protect it in there I use a wind muff from a microphone. Moving up, I have a Insta360 Go 2 camera, which fits nicely into that bag together with all of its accessories. And then in this other bag, I have the various lights we use. So a simple light that goes on top of the camera and also another light, which will go multi-colored if we ever need it to. For the GoPro batteries, we use this unit here to charge up three batteries at a time. And then for the SD cards, got a little pouch that I'll put those into. Yet more black tape and a container that we use for our Rode Wireless Go 2 microphones. Speaking of microphones, here is another wind muff or dead cat as it's often called together with the Rode Micro and housing for that as well which we use to put on top of the cameras for vlogging walking down the street or making videos such as this where we just stick it on top of the camera. Also for the Z30 we have a telephoto lens just to give us a slightly different look to some of our shots and this kind of pen looking device is actually something to clean lenses of various cameras. In here is another camera. This is the Insta360 X2, which is a 360 surround camera. Underneath here, we store the GoPro, which we've been using more than any other camera since we started traveling. It's also nice to see that we have side access to the Nikon camera. And on the side access door, there are a couple of pouches which we use to store batteries for the GoPro, but you can use that for SD cards or lens filters. And moving on to my suitcase, one of the best tips we can give you is to reduce the amount of luggage you carry with you. As a hold luggage now, I am using a medium sized suitcase, which is actually on the small side. Okay, in this side, this is a compression packing cube, which has all of my clothes in. So it has t-shirts, trousers, shorts, dresses, tops, all of my clothes and then I have a again a packing cube which is compressed with all of my underwear and swimwear. I have a small bum bag just a few other items we have swimming goggles and a pair of flip-flops and a pair of sandals. Moving on to the other side so we have a laundry bag useful when separating laundry. We have a bag here which actually contains all of my medication it might look a lot it also has vitamins and some extra supplies that we carry with us. We have a toothbrush, our electric toothbrush and sunglasses, microfiber towel and another microfiber towel. We have more sunglasses, makeup, a wash bag full of all my toiletries, a foldable backpack. So that's our second foldable backpack. We have our famous white tumblers, which we've got two of there, which we would not travel without. I've got some hair stuff and my mini straighteners. And I also have a very nice friend of mine gave me a huge bag of samples of things, which really helps me on the road so I can have lots of different moisturizers and things like that. Thank you, Dawn. That's my hold luggage, now onto Neil's. It's different, but similar to Sarah's. Different in that she had potions and lotions, that kind of stuff, where what I've got is more tech. So heading down into here, what we've got on this side is the similarity with the packing cubes. In the bigger of the compression bags, I store my underwear and trousers, shorts and swimming shorts. 
And in the smaller bag contains all of my shirts, which basically is a whole range of t-shirts and one shirt with a collar so I can dress up. Then I have my toiletry bag, which contains things like shaving gel, razor, toothpaste. Behind that, this is a rug that we use. We used this on a video a little while ago, in fact. And then here is our kitchen set. Then we move on to the other side. We have first aid kit. This is a monocular, which is like a pair of binoculars, but is a single one. Cheap, it was about 10 pound. My cap, so that I don't get burnt every day and my drugs, my prescription drugs that I need, which as you can see, takes up a reasonable size in my case. And then, <laughs> continuing on that theme, I suffer with high blood pressure. So I use this to test it, but this is pretty light and you'll see it is USB powered. So I don't have batteries in it, which is a, just a little thing I do to reduce any weight requirements that we have within our bag. I suffer a lot with migraines, so I've got migraine relief tablets. I feel like I'm a bit of a lost cause actually doing this. This fan and light is actually Sarah's and I carry it for her. She has it next to her in bed. And then here is a green towel. This opens up to be one meter by two meters. We use this as a towel we also use it as a green screen for making videos. So if I can ever find something that can do two jobs, I'll take it. This I've strategically put back in here, but this is actually the case for my tripod. The tripod is in use at the moment making this video, but that's where I store it as we travel. And then I have two more bags here, which are tech bags. This is basically my TV bag, so in here, it's got my Amazon Fire Stick. This is a really cool device. It's called a HDMI capture device, video capture. And I use this when editing videos and I connect Sarah's laptop to my laptop so that I can use Sarah's laptop as a second monitor, which is really cool. And then there's HDMI cables and various other bits and bobs in there. In this other bag, this is kind of a everything else type of thing. So black electrical tape, you can't be a video person without traveling with black electrical tape. Things for the camera and these, I've got to show you these. If you need any wraps, any ties, these things, you get these from someone like Amazon. Don't cost much at all. Got no weight and you can feed that through there. So if, you, if you're tying cables together, put it in there, wrap it round, Velcro, perfect. That's our two Kindles, a power converter, and in here I have a pair of flip-flops. And this is a cost saver, a pair of clippers that we bought when we were in Thailand, cost about 10 quid, and they're wireless as well. And that's how I have such a wonderful haircut done for me by my lovely wife, Sarah. That is my hold luggage. Now we said earlier, I did something at an airport recently that we recommend everybody should do just to reduce the pain and stress of traveling mainly on low cost airlines. Check this out. Here's a little tip. If you are at an airport and you're waiting a little while to check in, take your, your uh, hand luggage, what you're planning to take onto the airplane with you and just try it in all of these baskets. Air France and KLM with Golden, but let's go to one of the more difficult ones, EasyJet. Let's see if I can try the best in class, Ryan Air. Everyone knows what they're like. Our bag for carry-on even works on Ryanair. If it works with Ryanair, it'll work with anyone. Good little test. Why don't you do that next time you're at an airport, 
with your carry-on bag, spend a bit of time testing it and all, and it will do away with that cabin bag anxiety. As we said at the start of the video, one of the key areas is how all this luggage fits together like a jigsaw for ease of transportation. And I think we've done a pretty I'll good job. So I wheel these two cases when we're traveling through the airport and I have this on my back as my personal item. For me, I have my personal item here, which when I need access to passports and things, I can spin this round and get the passports out of there. And then this is our two cabin bags this one nicely slots on top, so as you go through the airport, we've got rid of that. That's light on Sarah's back, this is light on my back, and we just stroll through like this. And it's off your shoulders. Which is key, because mm. I've got dodgy shoulders. We may have given away in this video that we are in Kuala Lumpur in <laughs> Malaysia. If you could see what we can see at the moment, you'd be pretty stunned. <laughs> but you're not going to see it until next week. We want to know, can Kuala Lumpur do Christmas? Can we get a proper Christmassy Christmas here? You're gonna find out next week. Really hope you've enjoyed this video. There's only one thing left to say, Sarah. You've been watching To Go Rome. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.